friends, welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for a recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Now this is how I'm going to do it. Y'all listening? I will review this season when they have good episodes. That's how I'm going to do it. Because they like to bring us in strong. And then halfway through, it the bottom falls out. So, what I'm going to do is review what episodes I feel like needs to be reviewed. Those fellas, uh-uh. No, mm -mm. ain't wasting my time, ain't going to waste your time. But so far, so good. But before the 90 days, honey, these participants. <laughs> so, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay? For my new subscribers, welcome to the family. You all, we are closer and closer to that 2K. And y'all know I'm trying to get 2K before January the 1st. That's what I'm trying to do. But if I don't do it, that's okay. I will get there. But I appreciate y'all. So let's start off with Mike. Mike is what? 33, 34 years old. He lives at home with his grandfather and his dad. His mom passed away from colon cancer. And it hit him hard. Mike, the only thing I can say is, I know how you feel, honey. I know how you feel. So... It hit him hard, and he's staying with his, you know, dad and grandfather. And isn't his grandfather a who, honey? Pops. <laughs> now, if y'all don't know, I love me some vintage people. Vintage people is what I call elderly people, okay? Honey, I love a good old old person, honey. They got the best stories. And Pops look like he's a real hoop. And honey, they got Mike up in there cooking some flat pancakes. Did y'all see them pancakes? Honey, they was extra thin. I said, Mike, did you put any type of bacon soda, bacon powder, any, anything up in there, Mike? They gonna have to eat 15 pancakes to get full. <laughs> Mike says that he has not been lucky in love. He said in high school he had a relationship, but that didn't go anywhere. He said that it's been over 20 years before he had a serious relationship. 20 years? I will say this about Mike. I like Mike. Mike seems like that he's a good dude. He seems lonely. He's obviously an introvert. But he seems like he is a caring guy. And I think that he wants to be loved so bad. I really do think that. And Mike seems cool so far. He's also a, a, a firefighter and he's an IT person and he has some brothers. Now, his younger brother, we're going to need to see more of him. And then he has another brother that had his face blurred out. He ain't trying to be a part of this. So, of course, He's talking to his brother, and like everybody else on this show who are family and friends, his brother has reservations. His brother's like, why are you going all the way across the world to meet somebody that you don't even know? It's not a good idea. And his brother feels like that uh, Mike is going to end up getting hurt. Just like all the other friends and family in these episodes, they wary. But some work out, some don't. Now, I have a feeling, Amina, how you say her name? I wrote it down, child. Let me see. What's her name, y'all? Her name is, where am I at? Feeling that she is going to break his heart. 
she is going to hurt his feelings and um, I'm gonna have to end up cussing her out because I like Mike so far. So Mike is meeting up with his um, friends, his homeboy and his wife because see, Amana has two children. And so he's going to a toy store to buy up some um, toys. And baby, when I tell you that toy clerk, <laughs> isn't she a character? Honey, I was tickled with her. Let me tell y'all some TLC, okay? If it don't work out with Mike and Hamina, just give Mike his own show. Because see, it can center around Mike trying to find love and his, fa and his family and friends. Because honey, his pops is a character. His dad is a character. Okay, we need to see more of that brother. And, you know, time and time, show that toy clerk. Because, honey, she had me in stitches. <laughs> so, he done went and he done bought those toys. And he's talking to his friends. And, of course, again, his family and friends are skeptical. And they say the same thing like everybody else is saying, dude, you don't know this chick. This is not a good idea. She's probably using you. Because come to find out that Mike has been sending her money. He said for rent and things, child. Mike says that he loves this woman. Mike says that this woman's loyal and he don't feel like that she is using him. We shall see, Mike. We shall see. Let's move on. Let's talk about Memphis. Y'all, how tall is Memphis? Memphis is a little woman. <laughs> I was like, Memphis is short. I'm five foot two. So Memphis must be at least four foot eleven or five foot. Or maybe her friend or is just tall. As we know, Memphis is dating Hamza. Ham's Ham. Let's just call him Ham Child. And he lives in Tunisia. Is that right? Is he is she going to Tunisia? But before she goes, she's going over to her homegirl's house. Because her homegirl is going to take her to the airport. Her homegirl was her foster sister. And she said that out of all of the families she has lived with, her family was by far the best. And they have became, you know, great friends. And she says that she wants bacon. She says she wants about six, seven, eight pieces. Memphis, I ain't mad at you. Because, honey, I can kill some bacon. Okay, so I understand. She said because she ain't gonna be able to eat no bacon while she over there, so give her some pig. So her homegirl done made her some bacon and some toast. And her homegirl said something very interesting. Her homegirl brought up the ex. And so she was like, listen, have you told Ham about your ex? Memphis switched real quick. She was like, I have not. And he don't need to know about my ex. And I was like, hmm. That's interesting. The homegirl looked into that camera and said, Ham don't know who Memphis is. Memphis is a hothead. And she can be very intimidating. Now Memphis says that when she was, you know, um, down in the dumps, she spent the night with her ex. She said it was no hanky-panky going on. It was just for moral support. She just needed someone to talk to. You know, just a uh, supportive nature. But she feels like Ham don't need to know that. Well, was this during y'all, your and Ham's relationship? Or was this before Ham? Because if this was before Ham, 
Ham, who cares? If this was when you and Ham were together and nothing went on, why should Ham care? And he's not going to understand you anyway because you got to use a whole translator app to talk to him. So he ain't going to understand. So you might as well tell him. So they all go way to the airport and her homegirl drops her off. Off she goes. She says that this is going to be the love of her life. That she wants to marry Ham and she wants to fly this man over here to be them kids' stepdaddy. I still don't understand why are they in a hurry to bring a stranger around their children. I don't get it. You know this man. Now the kids got to talk to this man through a translator app. And y'all know how I feel about them daggone translator apps, child. Honey, my nerves could take. Mm -mm. Her homegirl's worried. She's worried about her friend, so. Child, let's move on. Let's talk about Kayla and Alina. Kayla, he got his hair down, y'all. Caleb is cute to me. I think Caleb's cute. He looks better with his hair down. I think he needs to trim it a little bit. I'm not one for the long hair, but he looks cute. He's over at his mom and dad is getting something to eat. And he drops this bombshell to his mom and dad the night before he goes to Turkey. He tells his mom and dad that he's going to Turkey. And they're like, what? We didn't know that was on your vacation spot. But he wasn't finished. He says, well, um, I'm over there to, I'm going to go over there to meet a woman, my girlfriend. And they're like, girlfriend? We didn't even know you had a girlfriend. Well, I got a girlfriend. She lives in Russia. <laughs> but I'm going to meet her in Turkey. Oh, and by the way, she's a little person. I was like. Caleb, you couldn't, you know, gradually tell your parents, you know, bit by bit. <laughs> you just gonna drop it, bam, like a boulder. Honey, the look on his mama's face. Honey, it was like she swallowed a canary. She was like sickness. She was like, what? She said a little person like, like little and then he was like, yeah, a little person, you know, like a form of dwarfism. How did his dad win? I'm sorry. What? You come over here to eat our food? We thought that you was just going to tell us about your day. And here you are telling us you're going to Turkey to meet a woman of your dreams who, who, who was a little person. Here's Caleb, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, well, what about, you know, as in children? See, that's the first thing parents think of, right? Parents are already thinking about grandbabies. And so Caleb was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you know, you're moving a little too fast, okay? We haven't even got to that point yet. I'm just meeting her. I do like her. We've been talking for a long time online. And let's just take it slow. Again, I thought that mama was going to pass out. <laughs> That's a lot to take in, I must admit. Caleb says that he was brought up in a very religious, religious household. So we see... Caleb Packett, he got a whole bunch of protein powder and the big box of condoms. Why is it that it's the religious types that always have the biggest boxes of condoms, child? He's talking about how it's going to be having <clears throat> boom boom with a little person. Child, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole, child. I don't want to know. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to know what you, how y'all going to configure and I, I, it's okay. It's okay. Y'all y'all figure it out. 
So we have Alita. She's with her homeboy. And he's going to help her, you know, move around because she does have, you know, disabilities. You know, she, she's a little person. So it's hard for her to get around. So her homeboy is helping her, you know, um, pack and get to the airport and get to the hotel room. And she's excited to see Caleb, but of course in the back of her mind, she's thinking, what is he going to think about me? Because I am a little person and I do have a disability. I'm going to tell you right now, Caleb ain't ready for this. Caleb is not ready for this responsibility because Elena has a lot of difficulties moving around. She has to have a wheelchair. She has to be lifted in and out of things. She's just very, very small. And sometimes she is immobile. Prime example, they get to the hotel and which Kayla booked, and she has to climb stairs. There was no elevator. The bed was huge and way off of, you know, the floor. So she's thinking, how could he do this? How could he book this hotel knowing my condition? But I actually think that Caleb didn't do that on person on purpose, I think that Caleb just wasn't thinking. I don't think Caleb realized how small Elena is. Elena is. I really don't think so. And I think that when he see her, he's going to be surprised. I don't think he's ready for this responsibility. I really don't. But, we shall see. Let's move on. So we have Gino. Gino is on his way to Panama to meet his boo, Jasmine, honey. Gino is excited. <laughs> he is excited. But let's talk about Jasmine. Jasmine wants you all to know. Jasmine says she's hot, beautiful, and intelligent. Okay. Okay, confidence. Ain't no wrong with it. She says she has two sons. One lives with uh, his father. The other one lives with her. But the pandemic was so bad that now that son lives with her mother at, uh, in the countryside, child. But she says that she's excited to see Gino. That's what she said. So she goes to the room that Gino has booked. And she plays a recording of Gino saying baby talk to her. Y'all, when I tell you I put that on mute so fast, I don't want to hear a grown man telling another grown woman, who loves you? Who loves you? Who loves you? Who's my queen? Who's my beautiful? I was like, if you don't shut your mouth, who talks? Why would you find that attractive? I find that weird. I don't want to hear no grown man telling me, Oh, give me who that you? Who that you? Oh, you see? Are you crazy? Hell no! But she like it. Oh, that daggone giggling. So she goes to the airport, honey, and when I tell you she had on her short skirt and her six-inch heels, I said, girl, you better lock. <laughs> Jasmine said, y'all don't know I'm cute. Y'all don't know I'm cute. I'm about to show you. Better than I can tell you. So Gino, he gets off of the plane. And you know, he has a very high-pitched tone to his voice. And he says, Jasmine? I was like, Jesus Christ. So she's like, oh my God, the Gino. So they get the huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy child. See, it all starts out good. We'll see how this is. Because remember, Jasmine is, she's a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. She's possessive. She's jealous. 
and whew, Gino ain't ready. So they're excited to see each other. They get into the van and Jasmine says, tonight, I'm gonna break you. I'm saying, good God. I was like, Gino, you gonna need those pills? <laughs> because Jasmine's about to put your head through that wall. each other they're kissing on each other they're enjoying each other's company so it's time to get back to the little hotel room and y'all did y'all notice anything about that did y'all notice anything about it because i did once gino got off that plane and into that van nobody didn't put on no hand sanitizer Nobody didn't wipe their hands, didn't wash their hands. They get to the hotel, didn't nobody put on no bath and body works. So <laughs> they didn't wash their hands. In fact, Gino has been traveling for hours. And he lays on the bed. Now see, when I travel, when I get off of the plane, the first thing I want to do is take a shower. Gino didn't bother taking no shower, child. In fact, they went back out. I said, So Gino came with gifts. And he gave Jasmine an electric toothbrush because he says that dental hygiene is very important. It is. It's very important. But don't nobody want no electric toothbrush. And then he pulls out a pregnancy test. Gina, what's wrong with you? Gina, you just met this woman. And you already want to have some babies. He said, listen, okay, I'm down here. We might as well have some babies before I leave. I'm going to need to knock her out. I was like, Jesus Christ. And honey, baby, when I tell you, Honey, she looked at him and she was like, see, she was already ticked off about the electric toothbrush. And then Jasmine was like, well, I have a secret. Something that I haven't told him. See, see, I take birth control pills. And I was like, here we go. Oh, Lord. Now, see, they both, according to Gino, have talked about having children. But, see, Jasmine left out the part that she on the pill. Lord, that's going to break Gino's heart. He wants a baby, child. He wants a baby. We shall see. Oh, and I forgot to mention, she had her homegirl come over to set up the roses to spell out Gino loves Jasmine. And what about when her homegirl said that Jasmine was a psycho? I said, not the homegirl. Your homegirl said that you're nuts. I didn't say that. That's what your homegirl said, Jasmine. Let's move on. Asked and certainly least. Now, I'm going to need for people to stop using the term international superstar when it comes to Usman. Now that ain't nothing but a whole lot. Usman, you're not an international superstar. See, Soldier Boy, he's an international superstar and you're not. See, until you end up in the $5 bin of my local big lot, you ain't no international superstar. I'm going to need for y'all to stop. Ain't nothing internationally superstar about Usman. He's a dumbass. We have Kim. Kim is excited to go to Tanzania to meet up with Usman. Her mom's sick. And here she go, leaving her mom. She's worried about her mama. But her mom got neighbors, family, she got her medical alert. Her mom says she good to go.
gone over there to meet the man of your dreams. Kim really thinks that Usman, she has it in her mind that her and Usman are going to get married and it's the, you know, he's the man of her dreams. Kim, I'm here to tell you, I haven't even seen all of this season. I just seen two episodes and I'm here to tell you, you and Usman, it ain't going to be nothing, child. It's not. It's not. I'm saying it right here, right now. She's excited enough. So let's talk about Usman. Usman is in a studio recording a song. And Usman think he cute, y'all. Y'all see them pictures where he's posing? Usman says that his goal in life and what he's manifesting is to come over here to the United States and be as big as Chris Brown, Jay-Z. Usman, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but that's not going to happen, boo. It's especially after what I heard. Now, we got auto-tune, but yours is a whole lot of auto-tune, child. And then to find out that the song Zara is about a woman in the United States that he was involved with. Zara was beautiful. I was like, you were involved with her. You were involved with Zara. But you're ending up with Kim. And you were with Lisa. And Usman, I'm going to need for you to stop lying. When you said that Kim was beautiful, and then you said the same thing about Lisa. And I'm just going to leave that at that. Now, Zara, she was gorgeous. But he said that she was too jealous. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, okay. So, there was some clothing, and he takes a picture, and he sends it to Kimberly. What about how he said her name? Kimberly. And he says that, listen, for right now, Kimberly is not his girlfriend. Because, see, he don't want to get burned again with the older white woman. Let's just call it what it is. So, he's taking his time. She's a friend for right now. But she's flying all the way to Tanzania to see you. See, she got other things on her mind, Uzi. So he meets up with his, you know, his team, his assistant, his manager, his homeboys. And they're talking about he got to go on tour. Because, see, he's an international superstar. And he got to go here. And he got to go there. And what did they say that he had to do? Oh, he has to shoot a music video. That's it. But he says, okay, I'm willing to do all that. But I want Kimberly to be there with me. And honey, baby, when I tell you his homeboys was like this. See, they haven't even met Kim. And they sick of her. Because, see, of his history with hard face Lisa. And they said, man, this is a terrible idea. <clears throat> this is going to affect your career. Don't nobody want to see Kim? Because, see, we've been down this road with hard face Lisa, and we know how that turned out. We don't want her around us. In fact, one of his homeboys says, listen, he needs to be with a beautiful young model type. Not no 50-year-old white woman. He didn't, he didn't say the white woman. I added that. But he did say 50-something-year-old. They, they was like, we don't need for you to be around hard face, Kim. And so, Uz, he says that Kim is totally different from Lisa. He says that Kim isn't controlling. She isn't 
jealous of other women. That she's going to be submissive and loyal. You're going to eat those words, Uzma. You're going to eat those words. And when Kim gets down there, how much y'all want to bet she's going to cut a shrine? And I am here for it. Uzma really think that Kim is going to be this submissive, quiet woman. We shall see. And that's it, y'all. That's it. That's all I got. Y'all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends.